You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, B&B fans. It's Belinda from Soap Dirt, and I have got exciting spoilers for you. We've got a look ahead at what's coming in 2024 straight from the horse's mouth. That horse is head writer Bradley Bell. So we're going to unpack all the spoilers for you that he's released. These are really, really fun things, upsetting things, stressful things, but, but dramatic things. But first, if you haven't, please click subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And now let's unpack what's coming. So Brad Bell talked to TV Guide and says his goal for 2024 is to outdo what he did in 2023. He says he's planning more shocking twists and emotional payoffs. So let's start by talking about what I personally am looking forward to the least. And that is, of course, RJ Forster and Luna Nazawa, our newbie romance that is on screen like 60% of the time. Literally, I did the math on a video the other day. I looked at how many episodes she's appeared on out of the possible episodes since she started. She's at like 62%. And since RJ started, he's been in like 58% of the episodes that he could possibly have been on. Meanwhile, legacy characters and fan favorites are sidelined. And despite my lack of interest in RJ and Luna's insta-love, I'm kind of intrigued by the fact that Zende Forster will continue to be part of their storyline going into the new year. So Brad Bell calls Luna and RJ's plotline, quote, a sweet love story. But he says they're going to have problems in 2024. And the source of that trouble is Zende Forrester. He says that Luna is fascinating to Zende and that Zende is not a big fan of RJ's after the whole Eric choosing the anointed one to work with him on the fashion line. And so we can expect to see Zende to keep getting closer to Luna as his intrigue with her grows, and that causes some issues for the young couple in love. We already started to see a little hint of this in late 2023, and we're going to get apparently a lot more of it in 2024, but I hope not 60% of our freaking episodes. All right. So I've been worried because we haven't seen much of Bill Spencer lately. I even did a video. Where's Bill? Have they sidelined Bill? Because Bold likes to exit people without telling them. I saw somebody talking on Twitter. Somebody was wondering if Bill was gone because we haven't seen him in so long. And someone said no, because the network would announce it. No, they wouldn't. They did not announce it when they fired Krista. As a matter of fact, they denied it. They didn't announce it when they fired Darren Brooks as Wyatt. Both the actors were the ones who confirmed it. They exited Quinn in such a weird way. Bold just doesn't handle exits well at all. And they are not transparent, not one little bit. And sometimes they're even downright deceptive. So we haven't seen a lot of Bill Spencer lately. None, in fact, since mid-November. But the spoilers from Brad Bell give me a little light at the end of the tunnel. Brad Bell discusses the ongoing rivalry between Luna's mom, Poppy Nazawa, and her big sister, Lee Finnegan. He says there's more angst between the sisters to come, and that's where Dollar Bill comes in. Bald and the Beautiful 2024 is going to bring Bill into their storyline, which means more Luna. Yay. All right. We had that glimpse of Bill recognizing Poppy when he was at Il Giardino, but he he was unsure where he knows her from. And she seemed kind of offended by that. And they are going to pick back up with that. Of course, we do not know who is Luna's biological father. It's hard to imagine why Bill would be involved with this sister storyline unless he's a past fling of Poppy's and her possible baby daddy. I'm just glad to know we've got more Bill Spencer to come. And if he is indeed Luna's dad, I think I could grow to like Luna a little more if she's a Spencer. It's not that I don't like her, it's that I don't like the amount of screen time they are giving these noobs. That's my issue. Also, if you like Sheila Carter and Deacon Sharp, the good news is you're going to get plenty more of them in the new year, says Brad Bell. They have a storyline that is crafted to surprise everyone, and the head writer calls it jaw-dropping. So I'm pretty excited about that because I love me some Deacon Sharp. Sean Kanan is so adorable, so handsome, so hunky, and Sheila 
is always good when she's bad. So I'm hoping she's going to be plenty bad in 2024. I don't buy this redemption act. I like her as a villain. So you'll remember Deacon and Sheila have that secret engagement that no one but them knows about. And last we saw Hope Logan and Deacon talking. She objected to him being with Sheila and he's bothered by her being with Thomas. Hope was very annoyed when Deacon seemed to equate them. Like, basically, don't judge Sheila because you're with Thomas. But we all know Sheila is so much worse. She's practically a serial killer. I would be thrilled if we got a Sheila Deacon wedding, but I can't imagine they're going to get any RSVPs or that her son Finn's going to show up to walk her down the aisle. They might get a pile of protesters outside the church trying to stop the wedding. That might be what happens. And remember, Hope cut Deacon out of her children's life as long as he's with Sheila. So I wonder... If that's going to change now that Xander Avon is back and trash talking Thomas and making accusations of murder against him. Before I get to the last of the 2024 spoilers that B&B officially released to TV Guide, I just want to recap quickly who we do not do not have any New Year's spoilers for. We've got none for Liam Spencer. I do wonder when and if he's going to turn up again. In the video I made about Bill, I included Liam like, where the heck are they? Liam has also been gone since November, and his only storyline was trying to convince Steffi to leave her husband. And now that Finn saved Eric, it's kind of hard to imagine. Finn's hanging on to every word Xander says about Thomas, and Finn just dropped in and butted into a conversation between his wife and her brother and made assumptions and some things that I didn't think he should have said. I suspect Finn's soon going to be neck deep in an anti-Thomas plot, and I wonder if that might annoy Steffi, which may open a door for Liam. If not, I'm curious what, if anything, they have planned for Liam next year. There are also no 2024 spoilers that we were given for fiancés Brooke Logan and Ridge Forrester. So there's no worried word if they're going to get married or how things will go at FC in the wake of the fashion challenge and Eric's near death. No spoilers either for Katie Logan and Carter Walton. All right, now to the last tidbit from the official bold spoilers for 2024. This is about Eric Forster, who, as I predicted months ago and said repeatedly, is most definitely not dead. He's not even nearly dead. He's just fine. This plot was just written to try and grab Emmys. As a matter of fact, it's kind of funny because John McCook did an interview, mm, Soaps and Depths, Soap Digest, one of those, mm, one of the one of the online soap magazines. And he said, he was talking about basically laying there, you know, on the hospital bed and all the actors around him just doing scenes for their Emmy reel. He was joking, but I think that pretty much encapsulates exactly what Brad Bell was trying to do. He wrote this storyline that was supposed to be a tearjerker, this and that. But honestly, until like the very end, I was not moved to tears. I was towards the very end. I kind of was when we got Stephanie Forrester back, the OG Stephanie for that. But I never thought he was going to die. So I wasn't invested and it was so vague and they never told us what he really had that it was just... Ugh, it was so badly executed, but I'm sure we're going to see all this in the Emmy reels. So it, what's funny is, or not funny, Eric has been in a coma and was unplugged and technically died back in 2008, if you were watching then. And this time, though, his near-death experience has changed him forever, according to Brad Bell's spoilers. He says Eric recognizes that in surviving, he has good fortune, and of course, he's joyous to be alive. And it says what happened to him will affect the Forster patriarch in ways he didn't expect. According to TV Guide's report, Eric's next chapter in life is about introspection, and it will be complex. I don't know how much fun it's going to be watching someone be introspective, but okay. What is clear from these 2024 spoilers is that there is a distinct shift towards the younger set of characters. He even admitted that. I am not sure how wise that is considering who their core fan base is. This may be a last ditch effort to attract a younger viewership, but that younger demo are the ones that do streaming services, YouTube, they watch TikTok, they don't watch cable TV. So I am not certain that's even a viable strategy, 
but we'll see how ratings go. For now, that is everything we have on the 2024 spoilers for B&B. Definitely click subscribe if you haven't already. Drop your comments and check daily for more spoilers. We are here talking Bold and Beautiful seven days a week, so come back soon. And as always, this has been Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 